Hey guys, I'm Tom Kutron. Uh, welcome to my channel. I'm new to YouTube and uh, I'm starting a machining channel to show some of the content I make. Um, I do a lot of random project machining, so this is more of a job shop channel. Um, it'll also show some restoration videos, uh, maybe some woodworking, and mostly uh, probably uh, machine restoration because that's really what got me into machining. And machining has helped me to make parts for things I can't buy or find for old equipment that I collect. Um, I collect a lot of old farm equipment, tools, and if you want you can go check out Tom's Farm Equipment and Tool Restorations. I'll leave a link to that below. And that's kind of a small Facebook page that shows all of my projects. Uh, I do a lot of tractor restoration work and I started out doing that when I was around 12 years old. I started buying old International Harvester Cup Cadets and from there um, I built up an arsenal of tractors and I've worked on up to large scale Oliver Farm equipment. I own several Oliver Farm tractors, um, some, some Alice Chalmers equipment, other, vehicle, other tractors as well. Um, I also collect a lot of old hand tools, hand planes, vintage stuff all from pre-1940 roughly. Well, most of my tractors are pre-1965 and I appreciate that era because back then everything was made here in the United States. Everything seemed to be made with a passion and they weren't designed to be thrown away. Everything was made to be kept and that's why I like collecting those things because I can rely on them and I know they work. Um, I'm originally from Huntington, New York, and I still live there, but right now I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts, where I go to school. Um, I'm pursuing a major in mechanical engineering at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I've been here now for, this is my third year, and in those three years I started off um, kind of just working in the shops here. Um, most of the shops on campus are CNC-based, uh, computer numerical controlled machines, and I've learned how to use those over the years, not as well as the manual equipment, but using my past experience from other machines I've owned, um, before coming to college I've been able to make my way up in the machine shop and now I actually run the mechanical manual machine shop on campus here. And um, I work for the school roughly 15 to 20 hours a week and I do more or less most of the machining for our senior projects um, for just about all of the students in the mechanical engineering department on campus. So a lot of the content will show some of the projects that I'm machining parts for. Um, I can do stuff for the aerospace department as well where you see some work on possibly not rocket nozzles or various machine parts that we make here. Um, most of the content will be manual. I will include some CNC work, but I definitely prefer manual machining. Um, it's, it's great to, to be able to make parts with machines and you can run them, walk up to a machine and start working, whereas with CNC, you have a lot more computer aspects to it where you have to design your part online uh, uh, on a computer using SolidWorks or CAD software and then create a CAM toolpath software for that for the machine to follow and a lot of the times it's easy enough to make one-off parts manually and quicker and that really showcases the importance of the manual machines. Now a lot of my machining will also be service machining because oftentimes I'm working on old engines or old parts and I'll either uh, fly cut an engine block or bore out an engine or if the shaft's worn I'll turn it down to a diameter, weld it back up and turn it back to an existing diameter that I can use and a lot of that stuff is important to know because I can take old parts and make them new again or at least somewhat new and here on campus using my experience I was able to influence a lot of people on campus into liking manual machining and here at WPI we haven't had any machining courses probably in over 20 years. Uh, most of the courses for machining are strictly CNC where students really just focus on the computer aspects of machining. They don't learn too much of the other aspects. So I decided to open up classes on Wednesdays on campus and what I do is I teach students on the manual lathe which is to the left of me um, and the Bridgeport milling machines and that gives them a basic set of machines that they can use to do almost anything. I mean, you can start off with a block of material and produce a part out of it. Um, on the lathe, we can turn stuff to diameter. And I enjoy teaching in the, those classes. I am by no means a professional machinist by trade. I um, mean, you know, I'm a hobbyist at best, but I use my knowledge here to help other students learn. And I've been learning a lot myself over the last several years. 
And now I've built up probably about close to seven or eight years of machining and I'm 20 right now. And doing that, I can now walk up to pretty much any machine I've seen and feel comfortable using it within several hours. And um, that's really something nice. Um, I wish more people in my generation appreciated machining. I know a lot of the YouTube community is uh, some older generation folks, not necessarily old, but um, not right out of high school or college. But um, it's, it's nice to know the trade and be able to make parts, and that's really just what I love to do. Take a piece of raw metal and make it into something usable. Um, so some of the equipment I've owned over the years, I started off in high school. Um, I've owned uh, with my brother as well, a Sheldon Vernon vertical milling machine and jig bore, and that is a mid-1940s machine. Um, it's a very useful machine. It's in not the greatest of shape. We were donated by a great friend of ours, and um, it's a good machine. Um, it can all be fixed. It's just um, probably before anyone we knew owned it, it was improperly used, and a lot of the T-slots were um, chewed up on it for using carriage bolts for hold downs. But it's a good machine. It's, it's hard to find collets for it though, and I've been trying to make them over the years. It takes a Browning Sharp, um, I believe model double zero spindle taper. It's really hard to find collets for it. They're almost non-existent online, but the ones we have right now are keeping that machine going. It has up to half inch capacity. It's a half horse machine, and it's a pretty decent machine for what it is for its compact size. The table's roughly seven by 24 on it. And um, I've had that machine now with my brother for several years and it's running okay. But um, as you'll see in the other video I posted, I've been looking for a bigger machine. And you may think, why would I go towards buying a horizontal mill when probably a bridge port is the better machine to have for universal um, production and everything. But um, I want a horizontal mill because they're just so much more rigid than a bridge port. It's nice to walk up to a machine and be able to take cuts and not have to worry about the machine rigidity or something vibrating on the machine or a vibration affecting chatter. Um, the machine's just very rigid and I like that about the horizontal. Yes, a bridge port is probably the most versatile milling machine on the planet or, or clones of that nature. I have experience using them for the last five years now and I can walk up to just about any bridge port and use them comfortably. but it's just having that many axes to tram in and rely on and stay in one location can be troublesome sometimes and can affect accuracy. I definitely plan on owning one in the future, I just don't have one in the budget right now. But um, the horizontal mill I bought, um, I bought just a month ago and it was very affordable. Let's just say it was under $500 with a whole lot of tooling and it'll let the tooling it's probably almost weighs half as much as a bridge port. I have over a thousand pounds in cutters that came with the machine. Various plane millers, gear cutters, um, slotting cutters, slitting saws, all different widths, diameters, so I'm pretty well set with about six arbors as well with it and I've been adapting the 40 taper stuff from our Haas equipment here at school to use in that machine. And um, that in Duma Horizontal will hopefully definitely serve me very well over the next 20, 30 years or as long as I own it. Um, another machine I own is I currently own a South Bend Model 9A and it's got a 48 inch bed on it. It's a fairly long bed which is nice for that machine. I definitely look forward to owning a bigger lathe in the future. Um, I, was at, I was given the South Bend 9 lathe by a teacher and friend and uh, I've known him most of my life and uh, the machine came in and I did a more or less full restoration on it and um, it's fully tooled with carbide insert tooling and high speed steel tooling. I made a cool quick change tool post the same size as AXA for it. I will show you a video on that probably in the coming months. I might just make one over again changing a little bit of the design after knowing that tool post now. But um, that lathe is really nice for small work, uh, work and uh, a lot of the stuff at home when I'm just home in my garage shop. Um, I can work in my basement at night with the machine. It's quiet. It doesn't take up a lot of space, and it's frankly the probably one of the best lathes you can get down a flight of stairs into a basement for its size. And uh, it's belt driven. It's got the back drive rather than the under drive, but the, the machine is in fairly decent shape. The ways are a little worn on it, but nothing that really affects the accuracy too much. Um, I do look forward to owning a bigger lathe in the future, but for what I have right now, I can't complain. Um, other machines I have. Um, at home, 
uh, not too much right now, just basic power tools. I definitely am looking to get a, either a vertical or horizontal bandsaw or combo of both and possibly a surface grinder. I do have a belt sander at home and that gets the job done. It's nothing too fancy to brag about. But most of these machines I've bought and had over the years strictly to make parts for stuff I'm restoring. So I work on a lot of old farm equipment and parts are sometimes available for them depending on how rare the machine is. And if the machine is rare, I can't get parts for them and it's easy enough to make. I can probably make one that aesthetically looks fairly similar and will function as well as the part that existed. And sometimes I can change the material to make the part better suited for its application. A lot of times I'm taking cast iron parts and replace them with um, steel parts because for clamping fixtures sometimes cast iron is will crack and um, a lot of the times they were braced back together and I don't like relying on cast iron for clamping because it's terrible in tension and compression. It's, it's, it's an excellent material but uh, the second you apply tension or compression on it, it, it tends to crack. So I will replace parts with steel or various other materials and make a lot of bushings for things that are worn out. Um, I am not a very experienced welder but um, I know people that have been helping me learn to weld over the next over the last several months and I look forward to getting better at it. Um, my fam, my brother owns a nice Miller MIG welder and he does most of the welding for me at home which is really nice. Um, up at school here we have a weld shop and I know how to use most of that equipment. But as, other than that, um, I started off um, going to high school in Huntington, New York and going to high school there was probably one of the kids that stuck out a lot in the crowd because I was fairly old school. Um, I loved old machines, I loved tractors, I would drive tractor to high school here and then and I listened to old style music. I don't appreciate most of the stuff from this era. I love looking at the bygone era of the 1930s through 60s and just seeing what we did as a nation and how much has changed over the years and um, I do appreciate that era more than anything else and I, I love trying to bring back um, even just expressions from then but um, I am from Long Island and that kind of talk is very rare where I'm from. Most of the equipment that most of the vehicles people drive are from 2012 and newer and I, I like old, older stuff so I drive tractors that are from the 40s and people see me and they think I'm crazy but um, I definitely love working on that old equipment and I hope that this channel will show you some of the cool stuff that I do and uh, hopefully you guys will appreciate it and make make you guys happy watching it but um, most of my machine that will be on this channel um, will be split between school and, and home and at home I don't have quite as much machines I have just a small mill and lathe at home and at school here I have access to several bridge ports uh, do all 13 inch lathe, the cobalt surface grinder and then my big and do my horizontal mill um, which that mill is quite heavy uh, we moved it into the shop it's just over two tons um, for its size and capacity, that's a heavy machine, and uh, I look forward to getting that home after I graduate. That'll definitely make a good machine to have, and I am looking for a right angle milling attachment for it. I know the Indumas are really rare in the United States, and uh, this is a model UR-2, and I believe it's from 1946, but a lot of the serial number charts for it are non-existent. So I'm guessing off of what the number on there is. The machine does have that 40s, 50s era look. Everything's rounded. It is made in Italy, which is surprising because when you look at it, it looks like an American-made machine. But um, it definitely was made for American markets, though, because a lot of the hardware standard and all of the axes are in thousandths of an inch. And that is kind of strange if an Italian company was making them for the American market when the American markets could buy Cincinnati's, Kearney and Trekkers, blah blah blah, other machines of that type, and um, I definitely bought this mainly just for the price standpoint. Um, a lot of the other names that are well known, they'll sell for a little bit more, and being well, a high school student with quite a bit of loans and um, not a whole lot of money uh, coming in, buying this machine for a couple hundred dollars really helps me out just to get my machinery set so I could actually make parts for my stuff. Um, you'll also see other videos on this channel probably of some tool reviews or tool um, demonstrations that probably you guys haven't seen before. Um, I do have a lot of old wooden hand planes as well as regular hand planes. I do some woodworking and I collect 
a lot of old hand tools, logging tools. Um, I have quite the axe collection and cross cut saws and I love doing timber work and my dad and I, we do a lot of cross cut sawing. So I, what I do is for all of the axes I do restorations on and repairs on, I make all of the wood handles for them out of American Hickory or American White Ash. And um, I've been making handles now probably over 10 years. And that's, that was one of the few things that started me off into working with my hands and making parts. And um, from there on, it kind of drove an initiative for me to start making things rather than buying them because A, it's cheaper. Yes, it does take t some more time, but I learned from it and from there I could build up a knowledge that hopefully when I'm older I'll have enough knowledge to walk up to any situation and figure out what I can make uh, to fix it. So that's a little bit about me. Um, otherwise, here at WPI, um, I'm almost done with my undergraduate requirements. I plan on doing a concentration in design and I am almost done in that. And once I get my major, I look forward to working out in the mechanical engineering field. Um, I'm focused in probably power transmission and design, that's my interest, and um, I love automotive applications as well, and manufacturing, and I look forward to using that engineering skill to hopefully design stuff in the future. But um, on, another, on another note, I am from Huntington, um, but right now I'm in Massachusetts, I probably already mentioned that. Um, a fun note about me is I am fairly musical. I'm an opera singer. Um, I play t the tuba and I've actually used machining to help play tuba over the last couple of years. Um, tuba mouthpieces are very expensive and I've designed in solid work several mouthpieces over the years based on different geometries so that can influence my pitch when playing. So I've made tuba mouthpieces out of various materials from bronze, brass, um, various aluminums and steel uh, just to see how the different materials perform and done that entirely both manually and CNC on both uh, turret and regular lathes and uh, it's cool to come into, th um, come into school with a, a, a mouthpiece you made, put it into an instrument and make pretty decent music. I do love playing the tuba, I've done it for over probably 12 or 13 years now. I started when I was really young and um, I do enjoy playing that but uh, that's a little machining tidbit that's cool about music. But um, other than that, that's a lot of pretty much everything about me that you probably want to know. Um, if you like what you're listening to, um, if you want to see more from this channel, I will be posting more videos. Yes, I know there's not really a whole lot right now, and the videos won't be coming in very quickly, probably once every other week or so, because I am a college student and I am very busy. But um, I hope you guys like this content, and uh, I look forward to posting more videos on YouTube. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will catch you guys all later.